Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to start writing Markdown. Markdown is a language that's used to write web pages. And normally, when you write a web page, you write it in a language called HTML. But sometimes HTML can be a little syntax heavy, and a lot of times it's not really convenient to write something like a blog post or just like an article on a web page inside of HTML. And that's where Markdown comes in. Markdown allows you to write basic web pages using plain text. So instead of using some messy and complicated HTML tags, you can just write your article or your blog post like you normally would in plain text and it'll get rendered by what's called a markdown engine and all of that plain text will get converted into HTML. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you everything about markdown syntax. We're not going to talk about markdown engines. We're not going to talk about how markdown gets converted into HTML. I'm just going to show you how to write Markdown. The first thing you need to know is how to create a Markdown file. Markdown files are created with the file extension .md. So just create a file, give it that .md extension, and you'll be able to start using it as a Markdown file. First things first is how can we create headers in our website? A header is like the title of the website. It's a really important element. You can create headers in Markdown using a hashtag. So you type hashtag a space and then you want to type out the header. So there's different styles and sizes of headers. And the first header is called a header one. And the header one is notated with one single hashtag. So if I save my page, you'll see that header one shows up over here. And the number of hashtags that we give to this header will directly correspond to the size of the header. And there's six sizes of header. Header one all the way down to header six. So if I was to give this like three hashtags, for example, this would now be a header three. You'll notice that it's a little bit smaller than that header one. If I gave this six hashtags, it would be a header six, the smallest size header that we can have. Let's convert this back to a header one and we'll talk about some of the other things that we can do. Another thing we can do is add in a horizontal rule. And a horizontal rule is basically just a horizontal line that goes across our website that separates content. And you can do that by making three hyphen marks just like that. And that'll create a line on our website to separate some of our content. Once we have our header and our horizontal rule, we can also create text. So we can just write text, we can write different paragraphs. So for example, I could write paragraph one, paragraph two, and you can just write out your plain paragraph text just like you normally would, and it'll show up on the website. You can also style some of the text inside of these paragraphs. So for example, I can add in an asterisk and another asterisk around the word or the sentence that I want to make italics, and now this word will be italicized. And so you can see over here it's italicized. If I want, I can add in another asterisk and another asterisk at the end, and now this word will be bolded. If you don't want to use asterisks, you can use underscores. So two single underscores like this will make the word asterisk, and four single underscores will make the word bold. So you can either use asterisks or italics, it doesn't really matter. In addition to creating paragraphs, you can also add links into your markdown file. So for example, if I wanted to create a link to another website or to another page on my website, I can do that using the link tags. And the way you do a link is two open and close square brackets and then an open and close parentheses. Inside of this square brackets, we're gonna put the text that we want for the link. Imagine we wanted to create a link to Google's homepage. I could say Google's homepage and now inside of these parentheses, we can just type the address that we want the link to go to. So in Google's case, it's just google.com. Now this will create a link for us to Google's homepage. And if I open this up, it brings us to Google. In addition to linking to an external page though, we can also link to an image. And linking to an image uses the same format. So it's gonna be open and closed square brackets and then an open and close parentheses, and we're gonna add on the end here an exclamation point. So an exclamation point is gonna go before all of this stuff. And in here we can put alt text for the link, and alt text is basically just text that'll show up if the link can't be found. I have a link to Markdown's logo, so I'm just put Markdown logo. And you can either access a link that's like on a website or you can access a link that's on your local file system. In my case, I have one on my local file system, just called logo.png. So I'm gonna type in the address to the link. 
And then you can also add in um, what's called hover text. So this text will show up when you hover over the image. So I can just say like logo. And now what this will do is it'll insert the image that I had on my file system, which is just this logo into the web page. And you'll see when I hover over this, that hover text shows up. So it says logo. So that's how you can do links and images. And those are going to come in handy a lot on your web page. We can also add in lists. So if you want to like list out certain things, there's really two types of lists we can make. One is an ordered list, which will be like numbers. So like one, two, three, four, five. And then there's an unordered list, which will just be like bullet points. So we can create an ordered list. Let's just make it of like fruits. So apples and pears. And now this will show up on our website as a list of all of these fruits. If we wanted to, we could change this into an unordered list where we would just use an asterisk. So instead of numbers, we're just using asterisks. So it would be like that. You can also kind of cheat a little bit. So you can't have uh, an unordered list and an ordered list in the same list. So you can just put like a one here and then add the rest of these with asterisks and it'll automatically fill in what the number should be for you. You can also embed these lists. So I could have like a list within a list. So I could have another list in here like with different types of apples. And now this will show up as a sub list to this main list. So lists can be very useful. And again, there's two types, ordered list and unordered lists. We can also add in tables. So a table would just be like a table of information and tables are actually a little tricky to add in. I have a table here that I made before this lesson and I'm just going to sort of paste this in to show you what tables should look like. You're basically creating the table using these like horizontal pipes and these hyphens and you need to separate columns using these colons, but you can basically map out a table using this basic structure. And here I just have like, like a table of like purchase orders or something. So we would have like name, item and price. And then we have all these different entries. So if you want, you can sort of take the time to make a table like this. And the last thing I'm going to show you is adding in code blocks. So if you want to add in like code blocks onto your website, like maybe you wanted to include like a snippet of code, you can do that using these back ticks. So I'm going to type three back ticks and then I'm going to type three back ticks to end this. And inside of these back ticks, I can write any code that I want. So I'll just write some like JavaScript code. And this will show up on my website as a stylized code block, just like that. You can also specify which programming language you want to use. So if I was writing code in JavaScript, I could type that here and you'll notice that the styling of this text has changed. So my text editor was able to figure out that this was supposed to be JavaScript. And a lot of times that'll change the way that it's styled on the web. It really just depends on which markdown engine you're using. So you can use all of these different elements. You know, we talked about headers, horizontal rules, lists, images, tables, code blocks. All of these allow you to scaffold out basic HTML pages using just plain text or just that markdown format. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.